basketball ethics. Pacers thunder last night. They killed just Alexander. Was he fouling late to stop Indy from dribbling out the clock so he can get a chance to score 30 to break Durant's thunder franchise record? Would that be fair or foul if he was? Also, speaking of fair or foul, the Texas high school team that did nothing in the first quarter to run clock in a playoff game. Is that fair or foul? And the opposing team that did nothing to turn up. What is that about? Ooh, my full compliment foul. What happens to this game I love? Regular foul. But we start with Aaron Rodgers' Veep episode. A headline yesterday you both could not believe was crossing and very much could believe was crossing. Frank, around the horn to you, how should the Jets consider that headline you see right before you? We've been wondering for months whether or not he could run. The answer is he's running for office, which is a little hard to believe. If I'm the New York Jets, I am not thrilled about this. You know, being an NFL quarterback is a full-time job. I get it from Aaron Rodgers' standpoint. He's one of the smartest guys in the room. He'll tell you he wants to get into politics after he plays. Politics after he plays, but the Jets have gone the longest in the NFL right now without making the playoffs. They never won a playoff game. They haven't won a Super Bowl since 69. Nobody associated with the Jets wants to hear about politics right now. They want to know when Aaron Rodgers is going to play and are you all in? You're either all in or you're not in at all. Jay Donde, how do you think the Jets received that headline yesterday? They, they can't be happy about it, Pick, particularly after he called everyone out for saying we need people who are focused on winning a championship around here. And now he's going back on that just a couple months later. But I right. also think it's not as bad as it sounds like. It's not like the days of, you know, the Lincoln-Douglas debates where they're taking trains around. Like, I think he can probably <laughs> do more by doing, sitting on stand on the Pat McAfee show. I think little would change. Just making the same type of, like, internet and, and podcast. So you think he can do both? Probably do you more think he could be playing I, at I Buffalo Sunday night not, not, on the not campaign well, trail on Monday? Not well. <laughs> But I, I just think we think campaign trail, and it's not like back in the day. I think he can still kind of keep his same schedule, but it wouldn't be conducive to this team winning a championship. He wouldn't be all in on this team trying to compete for the Super Bowl. Clinton Yates. Yeah, the only way he keeps the same schedule is if he's not playing football, which is what has been the case for some time. My main concern with Aaron Rodgers, as you know, Tony, has been that he was going to be a distraction off the field for the Jets, and I think more largely for the NFL. This is extremely awkward, not just because somebody is choosing to do this. We can run down the line of different athletes that have run for different political offices and have won and have been fine, but particularly who he's choosing to run with and how this goes makes this a very difficult sort of thing to just say, all right, that's fine. I do wonder if somebody else in the league, let's just say a GM or an owner, decided to do it, what the reaction would be as well. But am I really going to believe that Aaron Rodgers is going to be living at the Naval Conservatory on Mass Ave next to Guy Mason Recreation Center where I played baseball in Little League growing up? No, that's not going to happen. This all just feels so unserious, and that's why I think it's kind of just weird in general. Bill Barnwell. I've already seen Aaron Rodgers in an administrative role. He was the GM of the Jets last year. Did not go well. Don't want to see that again. And if you're a Jets fan, and this is free agency, if you're the Jets and you're going to offensive linemen, you're going to wide receivers, and you're saying, hey, we're all in to win a Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers this year, why would any player look at this and think Aaron Rodgers is serious about committing to the Jets and committing to being there all year next year? I think it hurts them at a crucial time for the organization. Are you taking it serious, Bill Barnwell? I think other people are going to take it serious. If you can choose between the Jets and another team and your, your career is on the line, are you going to choose the guy who's maybe thinking about going to run for Ice Vice President? I don't think so. And Frank Isola, are you taking this serious? Yeah. I, I am because I think Aaron Rodgers is taking it serious. I would say this, though, for, for the New York Jets and especially their fans. You know, it's a desperate fan base, and they, everyone's being patient with Aaron Rodgers. You know, all I see, he might come back, he may not come back. And now you're getting this announcement. I get it. We're long away from the, from the first game of the season. But this is not the message you want to send. If you want to run, then just run. You want to play quarterback, just play quarterback for the Jets. Don't try to juggle both. It's not a good look for him. Now, run later after you retire. Let's talk some football now. Kansas City restructuring Patrick Mahomes' contract. It frees up $21 million in cap space for the two-time defending champs. They've had a quiet two days of pre-free agency, Barnwell. 
what could this mean? What should the move be for the champs? Are there any moves left after the last two days? Lots to do for them, but it's not about what the free agent market says. It's about what that team has coming up in the future, which is a number of free agents. This is the sixth youngest team in football a year ago. A lot of talented young players who are on rookie deals about to become uh, eligible for extensions and hit free agency next year. Nick Bolton, the star linebacker, Trey Smith, Creed Humphrey, two excellent linemen, and Legarius Sneed, their franchise cornerback, who still needs a new deal. All that cap space they're clearing out, I think it's for those guys, because from Remember, they've won the Super Bowl the last two years with a wide receiver core we were making fun of the entire year. I know everyone wants them to go out and get that wide receiver, but they've proven they want to build around other positions and let wide receiver work itself out later. Glenn Yates, how do you read the restructuring of Mahomes' deal in Kansas City? I read this as Mahomes looking at the guys that make him best and taking care of them. I mean, listen, you might say it's not about the free agents in terms of who the Chiefs want to get otherwise, but I do think it is about how this league looks at offensive linemen now. Centers are making much more money than they did. Guards are making much more money than they did from what I'm seeing, and not just blindside tackles. So taking care of your own guys. I mean, Pat Mahomes is the guy who's out here watching, you know, combine tape and tweeting about it. So he obviously cares about who's on this team to keep it going the way that he plays and what he needs. I like this. But you think smart. this is is also more about Creed Humphrey, for example, on the offensive line getting paid in the future and not Mike Williams, an available wide receiver released by Los Angeles today. Jay Adonde to you. Look, he indicated he was amenable to things like this the morning after the Super Bowl. He was already thinking about, OK, what can I do to keep this thing running? And that's staying in shape, take care of his body, but also some of the contract machinations. And you wondered what was going to happen with Chris Jones. One of the major questions going into the offseason, guess what? They got that taken care of, where last year that was something that dragged on into the start of the season, one of the reasons they got off to a slow start. But now that's taken care of. So I don't think it's about going out and shopping. I think it's about trying to preserve and protect that core that's proven to be a championship uh, group. Frank Isola? We know that Patrick Mahomes has a high IQ on the field. He clearly has one off the field as well. He did the same thing last year, restructuring his contract to keep this thing going. He knows they're going to win with defense, so they go out and they try to upgrade there. The wide receiver core, as Bill mentioned, 25 drops last year, most in the seven more than any other team. And what did it result in? They won the darn Super Bowl. I get it. He probably wants better weapons outside, but he seems to manage. It's about that defense and winning for Patrick Mahomes, and that's what he's been doing. That's what they've been doing. Bill Barnwell after the horn. Even if they're going to add a wide receiver, I don't think Mike Williams is the guy. Not the fastest guy when he's healthy, coming off of an ACL. I think they need speed more than they need size in their receiving core. Do you core see anyway. that in the current free agency pool, or is that something that one of the best receiver drafts in quite some time they could find there? One or the other, Curtis Samuel is still a free agent, and Marquise Brown is still a free agent. And again, this is one of the deepest wide receiver drafts we've seen in years. They can hit wide receiver multiple times in the draft. Keep it going with teams in free agency window. Houston Texans made a couple moves I want to get your take on. They traded for Joe Mixon, and they signed Daniil Hunter. Last year, this franchise, as we all know, went with a rookie head coach and a rookie quarterback, went from three wins to ten wins, and then a win in the playoffs. Clinton, you think they could make another leap on last year's leap this year? Yes, I do. This is how you coach your quarterbacks and how you build around them, something we don't see done very well in this league. I talk about it all the time. Nick Casario, just creating interest in a squad that's got a star like Stroud that managed to take that big step, I think is huge. I think that's how you're supposed to do this, and I really do like the fact that the Texans, the Houston Texans are a team that we're talking about in March as actually being able to make some noise in that division. Yes, this is all Make good. some noise in that division. I asked you, could they add to last year? That's 10 wins and a playoff win. You have that going over those numbers? I can see that. C.J. Stroud is a kid that, from everything we've seen about how he processes the game and how his development has gone, will get better. I like this situation for Bill the Barnwell, guy. can you say, without a little bit of a, <laughs> equating a couple things there, that this team will build on 10 wins and go over? I think they will. And I like what they did. They made moves to compete with the teams at the top of the AFC. They went out and got their pieces to try and stop Lamar Jackson, try and stop Josh Allen, and try and stop Patrick Mahomes, Daniel Hunter, Danico Autry up front with Will Anderson. That is a great front four. You add Aziz Alshair, one of the best run-covering linebackers in the league last year. You get a speedy player who can hold up against the run, hold up against those Ravens rushing attacks. To me, I feel like they got D'Amico Ryan some pieces. They have C.J. Stroud and a lot of pieces coming back on the offensive side of the ball. They are a much more complete team. Than All right, that's a for over 10 wins.
Frank Isola for you on Houston. Another leap for them? Uh, Ten wins is still pretty good. I don't know if they'll get to 11. Mixon is a terrific player. Rushed for 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns last year. I think that's going to hurt Cincinnati. And to Bill's point, they really upgraded defensively. But it just goes to show you once again, this whole idea about rebuilding in the NFL, really what it's about, it's about getting a darn good quarterback and a good coach, and that you accelerate that process. They'll be good, but 11 wins in the AFC? Mm, I'm not sure. You know, on Day, you're arguing for the Texans over or under. It's not about winning more. It's not about winning more regular season games. Can they take the step where it matters most and get to the conference championship? And those three teams that Bill mentioned, we're talking Buffalo, the Ravens, and the Chiefs, I don't think there's room for the, for the Texans to break through there. What they have done is shown that they can be a destination franchise now and that free agents will be interested in there. People will be excited about being traded there. So this can be a sustainable success. It doesn't have to happen this year. Maybe next year. They're in position. They're building something. That's the important mm -hmm. thing. Well, it does have to happen this year for the question that we asked in an over-under. <laughs> now, you're a little bit evasive there, Adande. Yates, Adande. Isola, Barnwell with the lead. Fire cell next. Welcome back to Around the Horn, coming to you from the seaport, brought to you by Chase. All the things that I believed in for all these years, 50 years of coaching, no longer exist in college athletics. So it's always was about developing players. It was always about uh, helping people be more successful in life. That was sort of a red alert that we really are creating a circumstance here that is not beneficial to the development of young people. Jay Adande, around the horn to you on how you consider Nick Saban several hours on Capitol Hill yesterday. It sounds disingenuous, as if the purpose of players coming to Alabama was so that they could develop into NFL draft picks, which he had done really well, which was the whole appeal of being there. And if, if it, the money was the problem, then he could have stayed at Toledo or Michigan State or something, right? Why did he go different places? Said he could make more money, and there's no problem with the players wanting the same thing as soon as possible. Frank Isola. All right, the messenger certainly made a lot of money, so just remove that for one second. I do think some of the things he's saying are true in terms of development. I think this has a lot to do with the transfer portal. Guys come in, you develop, and then they're off to, you know, to some other program because maybe they're unhappy for a minute. And I do think he's talking about a lot of players and young people looking at the short term and not necessarily playing the long game in life when it comes to playing college athletics. Bill Barnwell. I, I really don't buy this. Disingenuous that GA uses the right word. I mean, anything college football players are doing now is based on what college football coaches have done for the last 30 or 40 years. I mean, Brian Kelly did not go from being a guy from Boston to talking about his family because he wanted to develop himself in, in Louisiana. It's always been about money. The sooner we get past that, the sooner we're going to be facing the modern game and its challenges. But you admit there are challenges, and is Saban speaking well, to some of the challenges as far as developing people, young people, who go to college for both playing football but also developing into adults. Clint Yates. Yeah, that's certainly part of it. But I felt that this was not only disingenuous, I felt it was unbecoming of Nick Saban. I mean, I always looked at this guy as somebody that had a little bit of a real view on the world, never mind what that old school mentality is. If you don't like the current system in terms of the ability to develop players and pay them as they are not mutually exclusive, that's a good enough reason to leave. You don't need to imply that something else on a moral standard is happening that should not be there just because you don't like it. I, frankly, was unimpressed by this on a lot of levels. So hearing culture coaches of a certain generation maybe older coaches but you've heard it from multiple coaches saying the game is different you interpret that as yes of course it is and coaches who can work with a different game are the ones who should be in the forefront now that's called evolution tone and that's why the games that we love stay around is because you've got to do different things to remain relevant the advantage he had was that he was already good and he could have maximized on that but instead because of whatever moral quandary he had he decided to go that's fine by me but don't blame anybody else for trying to get their paper fire sell to Mookie Betts since the Dodgers announced he'll play shortstop last week four games three clean plays two booted balls one errant throw one defensive interference he played 16 games at short last year, made three errors. Dodgers have one more Cactus League game, then two exhibitions in Seoul, then the start of the season. Clinton, buy or sell bets to shortstop working for the Dodgers this year. 
Whew. I'm buying it for Mookie's ability to be able to do it. He's one of the most tremendous athletes we've seen on a baseball field in a long time. But I'm selling what this means for the Dodgers. This is not like last year where Gavin Lux went out out of nowhere. He was supposed to be the guy, and it hasn't worked out so far. And they have other options at middle infield that they're not going to. If this is what spending a billion dollars in the offseason gets you as the Dodgers is a guy that's basically playing a makeshift position, that does not bode well for the blue in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, he can develop into a capable, there's that word, developed into a capable shortstop, but he was an outstanding right fielder, six-time gold glove winner. So not only do you have a shaky shortstop who's going to be learning on the fly, but you got worse out in the outfield. All right, guys, Sol? I think the Dodgers are crazy with the money that they spent. I mean, how many big bats do you need? Your defense up the middle of the field is so important. You're taking away a strength and sticking him now at shortstop, one of the best players in the league, and saying, no, he's a great athlete. It'll work. I'm not buying that. This is a bad move. Bill well. One thing to move rookie bets back to second base, the position he played coming up in the minors. He hasn't played shortstop regularly since he was in Lowell more than a decade ago. It is not a position that is easy to play, the hardest position on the defensive spectrum. The Dodgers have Kike Hernandez. They can play him in shortstop if they need to, but it is just an illogical move. It's taking your worst player, or your best player, I should say, and sacrificing him to justify a hole on your roster. Buy or sell three. Pacers beat the Thunder last night. We're Shea Gilgis Alexander fouling late to stop Indy from dribbling out to get the ball back so he could score and break 30 points. Seemed like it. His 48 30 point game, which broke Kevin Durant's Thunder Sonics franchise record. Frank is fouling to score more and set a personal record. Fair or foul? It's foul, and you told me that that Kevin Durant record was like the DiMaggio record. It would never be broken. Shea Gillis Alexander having a brilliant season. <laughs> You'll be top five MVP. You can't be doing that. That's Jay Donde. It's a foul, foul. And it's not like the DiMaggio record where everyone knew. Did you even know this number no, existed or who held the record for the, the Thunder Slat Sonics over the time? No. So why, why go through all this just for something that everyone's going to forget a year? Flynn Yates. NBA basketball player makes extreme effort at end of NBA game to score a bucket against another NBA team. I will be fine with that every single day of the week, especially for you people. You're, wait, wait, you're supporting this. You're supporting this maneuver? Yes, 100%. Did you know the record going in, Clint Yates? No, but that's fine enough motivation. I'm not the one who's going <laughs> to hold it. Shay's the one who's going to hold it. If you want to play harder in order to get it, Bill I'm Barnwell, in. go after it. When Ricky Davis, for the 17-win Cavaliers all those years ago, tried to get a triple-double, he never got a triple-double before. Didn't get a triple-double after. It was his one chance. Shea's going to have, like, 20 more games to break That's this the record. Point, What's please. the rush, dude? Like, just wait. Go get it This tomorrow. record doesn't have a clock on it. He's got another one of the rules of the in the NBA exactly. now. You don't play at the end. You do play at the end. Some that shots are allowed. Some no, are not. You're allowed to do it. You just look. Like an unserious person, to use the phrase again, when you do the it. The Thunder like are a serious team, though, and that's what matters. It's a tough loss to Indiana. Donde Barnwell, that's our showdown. Next. What the T-Wolves did to the Clippers last night. Minnesota was down 22 in the first half. At some point in the second half, they went up 22. First team to do that on the road this century. And Minnesota 118, L.A. 100. Kawhi Leonard going out with back spasms. That's when this game turned. Jay, was last night more about the Wolves or Clips? It's more about the Clippers because despite the great performance by the Wolves, the Clippers actually increased their lead once Kawhi checked out of the game. But they seem to fall apart once he actually left the building wearing that denim jacket. If your mojo was that affected by him leaving the building, you're in trouble. This is about Anthony Edwards taking over and having this be more of his team up to fourth in the NBA in usage rate. Did it in the fourth quarter without Cat and without Rudy Gobert, who got hurt as well. Mm -hmm. And Edwards getting the point for Bill Barnwell. We'll move on. Andre Jackson Jr. put that dunk. His whole head was over the rim. Look at this. But was there a boost off the body of the defender, Bill? And if so, are you deducting for it? Absolutely not. This was just as satisfying for him. I promise. He's something with bent elbows, nearly hits his head on the rim. Doesn't matter. Still dunked. Yeah. I'm here for the boost. It's reminiscent of Tom Chambers getting the boost when he had that great in-game dunk over mm. Mark Jackson. Respectfully, YouTube that one, Gen Zers. It's the same thing. Head oh. up at the rim. Oh, okay. But could Chambers go left? Like nobody in the '80s and '90s could go left, Jay. 
<laughs> Boy, Nadande for the boost will move on. Texas high school basketball. All right, so there is no shot clock in Texas high school basketball. So the Paradise Panthers dribbling and doing nothing, holding the basketball in a 4 nothing game for four entire minutes of the first quarter. Their opponent, the Ponder Lions, just pondering it and not doing anything. What is that about? We've seen this now happen multiple times this month. Dribbling out, 90 seconds. Lancaster doing it versus Amarillo. J.A., is it fair or foul if there, once again, is no shot clock in Texas high school basketball? This is foul. If Nick Saban is concerned about development, he should go down and talk to these high school basketball <laughs> coaches who are failing to develop these kids by teaching them that the path to success is doing nothing. Is that the message we want to send Woo, to our youth? Ooh, professor. All right. Bill David Bama. Byrne once said, heaven is a place where nothing ever happens. Apparently, that applies to paradise as well. That's very poetic. This, these kids are having a chance to play in the Alamo Dome, and the coach is allowing them to go out there and do nothing? <laughs> J.A. Dade, 30 seconds of FaceTime. Waste of time. Kaylin Clark capped off her Iowa regular season career by winning the Big Ten tournament, and a photographer thought it'd be a great idea to have her replicate the famous Kobe Bryant photo after he won the 2001 championship, holding the Larry O'Brien trophy in the shower. But guess what? That was after he won the Larry O'Brien trophy for the second time. This is the Big Ten Conference Championship. It's not the same. Too early to go to that. It's like jumping on the score. Are you predicting a jinx because game. you went to it? Wow. Too early.